the bell icon to turn on notifications. In the previous lesson, we started to introduce the concept of tabs and ribbons. And in this lesson, we're going to take a bit of a deeper dive into tabs and ribbons. And we're also going to take a look at menus as well, because all of these are really important concepts to grasp when you're working in Excel. Now, as we mentioned previously, we have our tabs running across the top and each tab has a corresponding ribbon. And what we'll find on each of these ribbons are commands that will allow us to execute different actions within Excel. And all of these commands have been arranged logically onto their corresponding ribbons to make it a little bit easier for you to find the command that you're looking for. For example, if I wanted to insert a shape into my worksheet, the logical tab to click on would be the insert tab. And I'm going to find shapes within this illustrations group, which brings me on to my next point. All of the commands on each ribbon are organized into these different groups. So if we jump back to the home ribbon once again, you can see that for things like cut, copy, paste, format painter, those are all part of the clipboard group. My font formatting options are part of the font group my alignment tools, part of the alignment group, so on and so forth. Now with so many different commands in Excel, if you're fairly new to the application, you're probably going to go through a good few weeks where you're not 100% sure what each of these commands does. Now, fortunately in Excel, we have something that can help demystify this for us. If I was to hover my mouse over any of these commands on the ribbons, notice I get a little screen tip pop up, which tells me the name of the command. It gives me a short description of what that command does. And it's also going to show me if there is a keyboard shortcut for this command. Now, some commands have keyboard shortcuts and some do not. For example, if I hover over bold, I can see that that one, yes, that does have a keyboard shortcut. But if I hover over, let's say, increase font size, you can see that it's not showing me a keyboard shortcut. Also, what you'll find with these commands is that if you right click your mouse on any of them, you're going to see what we call a contextual menu. Now, contextual menus appear throughout Excel and they're called contextual menus because they're kind of contextual to where you're currently clicked. So because I've right clicked my mouse on the format painter command in that contextual menu, I'm seeing menu items related to that particular command. So what you see in this contextual menu changes depending on where you're clicked. For example, if I was just to click on a cell in the worksheet and right click my mouse, I get a much longer, completely different contextual menu. So this is basically showing me all of the actions that I can take in relation to the cell that I'm clicked on. So I can copy this cell, I can paste it, I can insert new cells, I can delete it, so on and so forth. Another thing you'll notice when you right click on the worksheet, in addition to that contextual menu, you're going to see what we call the mini toolbar just above. And this mini toolbar contains some formatting commands. And these are in general formatting commands that you'll find yourself reaching for all of the time. And the idea of this mini toolbar is that it just makes it a little bit easier for you to access these formatting options without having to drag your mouse all the way up to the home ribbon. Now, some people love this mini toolbar. Some people really don't. And this is one of those things that you can control within Excel options. So let's just divert for a second and let me show you where you can go if you'd like to turn that mini toolbar off or on. So we're going to go back up to file into Excel options. I told you at the beginning we would be coming out of here fairly frequently. Now in the general section in this first group where it says user interface options, notice that this second option down is show mini toolbar on selection. So if you don't like that mini toolbar and you find it just gets in the way when you're right clicking, you can deselect this box just here and it's not going to come up when you right click. Now another place you can go to get access to more commands is by clicking on this little diagonal down arrow in the corner of the group. 
Now notice not every group has one of these diagonal down arrows. For example, styles, cells and editing don't have them, but we have this arrow in all of these other groups. Now if I hover over the one for font, you can see here it says font settings and this does have a keyboard shortcut of control shift F. So if I click this, it's going to open up a little dialog box. It's going to jump me straight to the font tab. And in here, I have a few additional options for formatting my font that I don't actually have on the ribbon. Let's cancel out of there. Let's click on alignment. Now notice it takes us to the same box. It's still the format cells box, but we've jumped to a different tab and that is the alignment tab. And again, we have a few more controls that we can use to deal with alignment in our worksheet. Now, what about if I click on this one here in the clipboard group? Let's see what this does. Now here we get something completely different. This opens up the internal clipboard. Now this clipboard is here to basically collect items that you cut or copy in your worksheet. And again, I'm not going to go into this in too much detail because we do have a whole lesson about this later on in the course. The main thing I wanted to highlight to you there is that by clicking on that dialog box launcher, the little arrow in the corner doesn't necessarily always open a dialog box. In this particular scenario, it's opened up what we call a pane on the left hand side of the screen. And if I want to close down a pane, I can just click the cross in the top corner. Now, the final point I'd like to mention here in relation to ribbons is that you can choose to hide the ribbon from view. By default, this ribbon is going to be visible at the top of the workbook all of the time. And mostly that's absolutely fine because you're going to find yourself reaching for your different commands frequently. However, if maybe you're viewing or scrolling through a very, very large worksheet and you want to basically maximize the real estate that you have on the page, you could choose to temporarily collapse up the ribbon. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. And by far, the easiest way is to use the keyboard shortcut and the keyboard shortcut to collapse or expand the ribbons is control F1. You'll notice as soon as I do that, I'm just left with those tabs and the ribbons no longer display. Control F1 again to bring the ribbon back. Alternatively, if I go all the way over to the right hand side, notice that I have this little drop down arrow. And when I hover over, it says ribbon display options. So if I click this here, I have some other options when it comes to showing the ribbon. Now I can choose to always show the ribbon. I can show tabs only, which is pretty much what we had when we press control F1. And notice that once this is collapsed, I don't have a little down arrow anymore to bring that back again. But what I can do is simply click on one of these tabs and it's going to drop that ribbon back down. I can then choose to always show the ribbon. And if I want to truly maximize the space that I have on the screen and also get rid of these tabs, if I click the drop down, I could choose full screen mode. And that's really just going to leave me with the spreadsheet in view. To come out of here, we can click out three dots in that title bar, click the drop down again and switch it back to always show ribbon. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.